When New York <laughs> remembers the tragedy of 9-11, no clergy will be there. And no prayers will be offered at that place of memorial for the dead. Mm. In fact, Pat, you know the mayor actually says that the event will focus on the families of the victims. But critics say that his ban on clergy actually shows a prejudice against religion. Heather Sells has a story. On Tuesday, the mayor gave a speech on 9-11, saying the hijackers did more than to just attack two buildings. He explained they attacked the freedom that defines our city and country the freedom to think and speak and worship and love as we wish. But the mayor is barring faith leaders from participating in the city's 10th anniversary service, and that has sparked protests from a variety of Christian leaders. At times of grief, people don't turn to politicians, they turn to God. So having clergy there that can both uh, lead people before God and also grant them comfort in their time of, of grief, I think is extremely important. The Family Research Council and other groups have organized petition drives to protest the mayor's decision. Other leaders like Reverend Richard Land with the Southern Baptist Convention have questioned Bloomberg, especially because so many faith groups were among the first responders 10 years ago. Even a Los Angeles Times editorial noted, if a minister can deliver an invocation at a presidential inauguration, it's hard to see a constitutional argument against a non-denominational clergy-led prayer at a city's memorial event. Religion has certainly been a part of other 9-11 memorials, most notably the service at the National Cathedral right after the attacks. And President Obama will speak at the cathedral this weekend in an anniversary service. Critics of Bloomberg point out that the nation has turned to God in times of need throughout its history. When America invaded D-Day, President Franklin Roosevelt, who was the iconic Democratic, liberal Democratic president, led the nation in prayer for more than 10 minutes in a national radio cast, asking for blessings for our troops. So this is not a partisan issue, and it's not just a current fad. Heather Sell, CBN News. Well, Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York, is enormously rich. He's a multi-billionaire. His Bloomberg terminals are in every stock brokerage office around the country, and he does they do real good work. But <clears throat> you ask yourself, what is going on? One thing for sure, he'll never, never, never be able to run for public office. Uh, maybe in New York, but certainly not any place outside of New York City. Well, Jay Sekulow of the American Center for Law and Justice is here with us. And Jay, what is the mayor thinking about? Why, I mean, why is he sanitizing this event to take away religion? Well, number one, it's exactly what you said. He is sanitizing the event. First of all, there's nothing in the Constitution, nothing in the free speech clause, nothing in federal law that prohibits yeah. prayer at these kind of events. It happens all the time. In fact, Mayor Bloomberg and other mayors have had prayer events surrounding this tragedy before. Here's what you've got. The Obama administration sent out a memo, and this is getting very little reports, but sent out a memo a couple of weeks back to all of their personnel saying, as we get ready to commemorate the 10th anniversary of 9-11, this is not about the United States. This is about terrorism worldwide. While, and look, we, nobody likes terrorism anywhere, but this was an attack on the United States. Removing clergy and and by the way, first responders are not invited either. The first two groups that went to 9-11, when that text took place, the firefighters they're not going to participate in this. Come on. He's, yeah, he's, he's, no he, first responders. Sanitizing against those right. brave firefighters? And why is that? It creates a, he wants to create, they want to create a different image. What is the image they want to create? I understand focusing on the families, but I will tell you this. Those families want, want an invocation. Of course. I mean, it just makes sense. And the mayor has done these before. And the city of New York has done these interfaith prayer meetings before. Yeah. This is not something new. And This is an attempt to rewrite who we are and what took place on 9-11. I'll tell you what it is, Pat. What? They don't want to acknowledge the fact that we were attacked by radical Islamists, and it was an attack against America. That's what it was. It wasn't an attack just on capitalism. It mm. was an attack against America at our financial capital and sure. at our governmental capital, and it was an attack by radical Islamists, and that's what they're trying to remove in this. They don't want to acknowledge that radical Islam are, uh, constitutes their enemy? Uh, absolutely not. In fact, look what the mayor's done. Yeah. He has supported the mosque at Ground Zero, right. but he's prohibiting clergy and prayer at the 9-11 memorial, the 10th anniversary. 
this is what you, you said it politically. I mean, politically, it makes no sense. I mean, you got the Los Angeles Times saying, yeah. of course you could have prayer at this. Yeah. We do this all the time. But this idea that, you know, he actually made the statement uh, that got some t attention. He said, you know, some things are just not appropriate. He was talking about the prayer ban. So prayer is inappropriate at a memorial service. Now, you're uh, legally trained. You're, yes. you're a minister. Yes. Uh, how do you do an invocation that, and how do you do a memorial service and don't have prayer? How do you not recognize the power of God, which was the source of comfort through this whole process? When you are memorializing the dead, and the dead have passed on, and invariably when you have a funeral or whatever to memorialize the dead, you have prayer, you have scripture, right. you, know, you give hope that there is a life beyond the grave. I tell you what I think is going to happen. Let's I see. think either some of these families that are participating will actually read scripture or pray, or the whole place may break out in prayer. Remember those uh, high school yeah, football game yeah. cases? So the court said you can't have prayer at a football game. And then all the students all over the country right. started to get up and doing the Lord's Prayer or singing God Bless America. I think you're going to see the same kind of reaction. It'll be in reverence. But to, to try to rewrite the history of this is tragic. And that's politically what's really going on here. Well, I, I think we don't need politicians like Michael Bloomberg. He's a rich man. And I tell you, Bloomberg terminals, they're great. I mean, as far as stocks and bonds, he does a terrific job. As far as... Uh, a uh, spiritual leader, he ain't got it. And I'm afraid the man who's in the White House hasn't got it either. Well, this is coming right out of the White House. I think Mayor Bloomberg's just pirating their line, which is sanitize it. Let's not acknowledge what happened. We're well, going to talk about it in a different Bloomberg way. Bloomberg claims to be a Republican. What, what, what's the matter with him? I think, Pat, they're buying this political correctness. They no. really think you could you could put a salve on this as if it didn't happen. And if we ignore the fact that radical Islamists attacked us and still want to attack us, we're ignoring reality. And, and the radical Islamists are a religious thing. We're, we're doing it for Allah, and we're going to have 70, right. 72 virgins after we get through going into those towers. But they, you know, but they don't want to acknowledge. That's exactly what these guys were thinking when they did it. Yeah. And we're going to, and 10 years later, to forget that, Oh. would be very dangerous. But the good news is the American people are speaking out, so I think well, we're going to be God. all right. Well, Jay, thank God for you. Keep the faith, brother. We'll